Hey guys, this is Chubbs, and today I just wanted to show you how easy it is to create games with an application called Construct2. Now, this application is available for free. Uh, you can Google Construct2 and get right to it. There's also a paid edition that you can uh, upgrade to that has a few more features and remove some of the limitations, but uh, the free edition is still perfectly fine, and there's a whole lot you can do with it. So I'm going to exit the start page, start a new project, and just show you how easy it is to get in and just create something really fast. So when you start a new project, you're faced with a blank slate. The white space here is where all of your objects can go. And if you zoom in, the dotted line that you see here represents the viewable area when you first start your game. So anything that's outside the dotted line uh, cannot be seen unless your character moves to it and the camera follows your character. Now, of course, you can change your project settings. You can uh, increase the size of the viewable area. You can increase the white space you have to, uh, to get access to bigger levels that you can create. But I'm just going to leave everything like it is for now and just show you how quickly I can put something together. So first thing I'll do is I'll pull up a folder of some images that I've created before the video. These are just PNG image files that uh, are transparent. And the first thing I'll do is I'll just drag this platform graphic into the scene and drop it. And immediately it becomes an object. So it's that easy to create objects in Construct. So now I'll drag this black rectangle out, stretch it, and put it across the bottom like a, a platform in a platformer game. So now that we have done that, I'll click it and I'll assign it a solid behavior. So now with just a few clicks, this platform is a uh, solid platform that will remain in midair and that the player can stand on. So that being said, we now need a player. So I'll go back to my folder of assets. I'll drag the uh, blue player rectangle into the scene. And right now, considering the small area we have to work with, he's a little large. So I'll just reduce the size a little bit. And now with the player selected, instead of a solid behavior, I'll assign him a platform behavior. So with just a few clicks there, if we go up here and test our game, the player is a uh, controlled object. You can move him left or right, you can jump, and the platform below acts just like it should. So it's that easy to get in and just quickly create prototypes. But I uh, still want to show you a lot more about this. So right now we just have a flat platform, nothing special about it. Something great about Construct though is the way that you can take one object or one asset and use it in many different ways. So if we hold down control and click and drag, we can create a clone from this platform and it inherits all of the properties. So this clone that I've created is solid just like the platform down here. Now if I rotate the platform and even resize it so that it's sort of like a ramp, now if I go in and play, the player can move up and down the ramp, no problems at all. So that's how easy it is to, to get a lot of uh, variety out of just one object or just one image. So now that I've showed you that, I'll show you something else that's actually even cooler than that. So I'll go back to my list of assets. I'll get this ball here that I drew, drag it into the scene so it's now its own object. I'll resize the ball just to make it a little bit smaller, drag it up here. Now what I want to do is I want this ball to be uh, controlled by physics. Now in order for it to react with these platforms, they too have to be physics objects. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take care of that. So I'll go over here to my objects list. I'll click platform, which selects both of them. And I'll add a physics behavior. And I also want the platforms to be immovable, which means that when the game starts, they won't fall off the screen. They'll remain in place. So now the platforms are both solid for my player and physics activated for this ball that I'm about to change. So now if I click the ball and assign it a physics behavior, if we start the game, with just a few clicks, we've created a physics object. So the ball 
it actually rolls down the platform and continues rolling off the screen. Now, if you if you watch it very closely, you'll see that when it collides with the ground, sometimes it's like it's floating above the ground and it doesn't doesn't uh, roll or even bounce quite like a ball. So, if you want to make it a little bit more accurate, all you have to do is click the ball and change the collision polygon to a circle. Now, if you start the game, because it's using an actual circle for collisions, the ball rolls very, very smoothly. So it's more or less perfect. Now, if you want to take a closer look, see exactly why it wasn't acting quite right with the collision polygon, you can double click the ball, which goes into the image editor, and you can hold down control and zoom into it, and go over here and click the collision polygon, and you'll see that although it did a pretty good job of automatically creating a polygon, this is not a perfect circle and uh, as a matter of fact in order to create a perfect circle you would need many more points and it would just it, it would take a whole lot more time to go through that process than to just go over here and change it to a circle so now that I've showed you how easy it is to get physics in the game what I'm going to do is go to this platform object and delete the entire object from our project from our project here and I'll go back to my assets folder and get this hill graphic that I drew drag it into the scene. Now I just I drew this real quickly with my tablet so I'll uh, drag the hills in place down near the bottom and I want this to be a more or less like a combined image here so I'll create a clone from the hills I messed up pressed the wrong key uh, create a clone from it try and match them up as best as I can without any uh, sharp points sticking up or anything like that this should be fine right here I'll drag it out just to resize it yeah that, that looks pretty good so now if I go to these hills either by selecting both of them or going over here to the objects panel and selecting them I'll assign them a solid behavior and just like with the platform an immovable physics behavior if we start the game the ball rolls along the hills and the player can move along them as well there is a problem though you'll see that if I get to certain parts on the hills the hills overlap like right here it's like I'm sunken into them and if I go to the center like right here it's like my players like floating in midair the reason for this is because the collision polygon is not set up quite right so anytime you have an object that's has a lot of curves like this or sort of complex you always want to go in and check the collision polygon to make sure it's just right so I'll double click the object once again we're in the image editor then I'll click the collision polygon button and you'll see that it's, it's more or less out of whack it's nothing like what the image is and uh, although construct does a pretty good job sometimes automatically creating polygons in this case uh, it didn't do very well so it's easy to correct that on your own so well, all you have to do is just click and drag the points like I'm doing here and you can more or less reset it or recalibrate it to to work better with your game and you can add new points and you can pretty much put in as many as you want to get it to act just right now it doesn't uh, like you putting more than eight points in fact you can see it warning me there because if you have too many points for collision the uh, the call the polygon will become too complex and it could uh, could bog down your game could make it perform worse but I'm gonna disregard those warnings for now and try and create a polygon that goes along the hills and uh, matches up just right with them so that our player and the ball can react with it just right we've just about completed it there we go that looks pretty good there so now our polygon more or less goes along the hill like it should and now that we've done this let's go ahead and exit the image editor and try it again in game now the ball should react much better you can see how naturally it rolls along the hills and the player himself also moves up and down the hills much better he doesn't uh, look like he's floating in midair in as many spots and also he, he doesn't uh, sink down into the hills or anything I see a few spots here where there's still a little bit of space in between him and the hills, but it's, it's much better than it was before. Plus, you can see the ball rolling up and down 
whole lot better. So now that we've done this, let's get back to the ball itself. Now, if you want to, just like with the platform in the previous example, you can create multiple uh, copies of the ball and create something of like a physics demo. The balls will all react with one another and the terrain. And if we want to make the balls even crazier, you can go over here and click the ball to select all of them. We can increase or decrease some of its properties. So if we want to make the balls more bouncy, we can do that. If we want the terrain to uh, have a little less friction, we can do that. And now at this point, the balls, uh, I'll, I'll delete a few of them. They should be so bouncy now that they'll be almost like basketballs out there. So now you'll see that they're, they're very bouncy, just like basketballs almost. That one, in fact, just about bounced off the scene. But uh, yeah, that's, that's just how easy it is to modify objects and uh, create prototypes and games very quickly with just a few clicks. Uh, I have a set of heels here, balls that are affected by, affected by physics and a player that can move up and down the hills all without any programming at all just a just a few clicks so again you can just google construct 2 if you want to try this out uh, if you have any interest in game creation whatsoever I, I would definitely highly recommend giving this a shot because it's uh... it's definitely amazed me just how uh... how many things you can do with it in such a short amount of time and something like game maker doing something like what you're seeing here would take a whole lot of programming and a whole lot of time. So if you guys have any questions about it or anything like that, just let me know and I hope some of you use it and find it as useful and fascinating as I have. So this is Chubbs showing you Construct 2 and signing out.